Wait for it. Wait for it. And we're live. Hey, all you crazy sci-fi and fantasy fans. It's time for your daily dose of shenanigans over here at the Blasters and Blades podcast. Just a couple of nerdy veterans and one chaos coordinator kicking out over our science fiction passions and fantastical fantasies. A place where magic is king, the sky is the limit, and space is the place. We are the podcast that puts the fun in dysfunction. So without further ado, we're going to let our guest, Mr. Matthew Jasso. Jasso, I'm butchering the hell out of it, and that's okay. He likes me anyway. Can Sometimes. you introduce me? Yes, my name, is, yeah, my name is Matthew Jasso. I'm a freelance writer uh, as a side gig. I work with companies like Apogee, with Aspire, and with Grok Comics, doing all kinds of different uh, fun and, uh, you know, almost like a cartoon. They're like, hey, Go make this work. And I go, cool, I will do my best. And sometimes I get a thumbs up and sometimes I get a different thumb somewhere else. But that's a different story altogether. <laughs> but uh, I am I am on Twitter at Mr. J Ninja. So if you guys want to bug me, that's where I am. Especially if you don't like my opinions. I love discussing cartoons, comics, movies, the whole nine yards. I am open to anything. I also have my own podcast called We Are the Batman. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And me and my buddy Mike Shea discuss all things Batman, Batman related, and sometimes DC. So we actually have an episode that I have to get on the books. I have to coordinate with his co-host. But I thought it would be fun to talk about Batman's gadgets because that is part of the iconography of Batman. And I don't think we even touched on those when we did the Batman episode. No, we didn't. We really need to, to get John Apple back on with them and we'll talk about it and we'll slap his hand too because he didn't think to mention it at all either in our episode. Well, we were all focused on the lore on that episode. so Yeah, I know. So we've got plenty of room to come back for the fun. So we have to make this happen with John because he was there at the yeah. inception of the Batman episode. So it's, it's only yeah. fair that he comes back. So. Yeah, you can't do Batman in, in, a, in an hour. That's... There's so many things you oh, can do. Religious. So, Matt, normally we would ask you the religion questions, but you've been on and you've answered those. And we know you're one of those weird people who doesn't drink coffee or tea. Um, so instead, I'll ask you, what comic or cartoon do you think influenced your modern right? Like what you write today, which cartoon or comic influenced you the most? Can I skip to a book instead? Sure. There is a novel called Horn. It was a series of four sci-fi books uh, written by a guy named Ben Sloan. And they were the most action-packed, horny books. Now, not that the horny is in all my writing, but it was just this really nice, fun, dark, gritty. Like, if Die Hard was a book, that's what these books were. And it was like every single chapter had um, cool action. It was intense. It was about this cop who basically his family gets killed and decides he's going to take revenge, but he's left for dead. He's got these fake, horrible um, cybernetics. And then he goes and buys illegal um, titanium military grade ones. And then just becomes a BA fighting crime and and solving all these cases. And it's, it's just awesome beyond awesome. So it, it it was, I think it came out in 89, 88 and ran till about 94. There's four different books, but just his pace the way he wrote and the, the way he kind of had these characters who were, even though they were intelligent and serious, they also could rib each other and, you know, just kind of give each other hell no matter what was going on. And even in the action, you know, you had intelligence, you had intense, not only like gunfights, but like he would have fist fights and sometimes there was martial arts mixed in there. So something about that just really clicked for me in that, like, it doesn't matter what, genre because it was a very like cop procedural sci-fi space but here this guy was just doing your normal fisticuffs gunfights and i was like yeah so i for me personally when i get to any kind of writing like that kind of it changed the way i was writing at the time and it is kept through as nick is could probably attest now if i'm writing something there's going to be lots of action in it i don't care who the guy is so uh, that that guy probably I would have to say is is the most influential as far as that. Probably the second influence would be the '90s run of Nightwing, because again it was like there were some of those issues where you just followed Nightwing as he flipped and fought through the city, and it would be the entire um, comic. And then you'd have a comic that was very simple where it was Robin and Nightwing riding the top of a of a train and just getting to know them as they experience this thing and it was just like 
having those times of like, especially with comics where, yeah, you can have that really intense action moments, but then just having moments of two guys sitting there talking, whether it was whatever weird thing they were doing or, or stuff like that. So I think that was where character developing character in action and in conversations, both of all, both of those things are kind of the, probably the biggest influence on the way I write now. Okay. I would say that revenge themes seem to be really big in the eighties. I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a nation re rediscovering itself after the end of the cold war. Well, actually the cold war wasn't really over after the end of Vietnam and the cold war was still going on. And there was a lot of reprisals going back and forth for, you know, in some cases, decades old fights between nations that were being fought by proxy. So revenge was a, was a huge theme. I don't know that I see a lot of revenge tales anymore. Now the revenge person tends to be the bad guy, whereas in the past they were the protagonist. Yeah. I think it, de it depends on the genre too. Okay, that's but, fair. But I also think revenge is one of those things that's um, universal. Doesn't matter your ethnic background, your your gender, your sexual orientation, blah blah blah, whatever. Everybody knows what it feels like to want revenge. So putting that on a character, it instantly just makes them a, a universally relatable character. Which is why that line in Princess Bride is so iconic. I am a nuggle monk tail. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I butchered the Spanish accent. Somebody can do it better than me, I'm sure. Nick, can you do that for me so we don't get hate mail? <laughs> yes. I will say to this man, hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. There you go. So if you're happy, people, now you don't have to send Stabby the hate mail for that particular incident. And with that being I'm said. I'm still working on my Chris Helmsworth in <laughs> Thor. Where he's like, nice. uh, we call ourselves the revenges because I want revenge. You want revenge. And what about you? You you want revenge? The revenges. Hello, my name is Kog. I want to have a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> so that no password for the Wi-Fi, obviously. <laughs> we were originally going to record an episode about Canon films because they are such a hot mess hodgepodge of genres, everything from lights. And light they're to great. <laughs> to spy movies to 1980s action flicks. I mean, they did Missing in Action and Delta Force with Chuck Norris. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot of goodness. And we were going to schedule that episode today. And unfortunately, the uh, the two that, that brought the episode to us and said, I'd like to record it are snowed in because they went skiing. Stuff happens. Uh, and so, Must be nice. Right? Well, you don't get snow in California. <laughs> we do. Texas. Not where I'm at. I mean, I just yeah. got to go about an hour east up to Big Bear. Yeah. Okay. In Texas, we later. don't want snow because it shuts everything down. Yeah, we get the, we the snow and rumors of snow will be enough to shut the economy down in Southern Virginia. <laughs> we got like a foot of snow when I was living in Texas and it shut the whole damn place down. I remember the snow Magetta and it was a couple years ago and like people were like literally dying because they were so unprepared for it. Yeah. I mean, it's I weird seeing palm trees covered in snow. Yeah. yeah. So we were going to record that episode. Now we have to reschedule. And uh, Matt suggested that we talk about 80s cartoons and what we liked, uh, a little bit of the nostalgia factor, uh, and then maybe some that we would like to see rebooted that haven't been rebooted already. So let's start with uh, we're all of an age where we had the experience of rushing down to the television, waking up early on a Saturday morning when we didn't have to be up before our parents were up so we could watch cartoons for like half the day because we couldn't DVR it. We couldn't watch it on Netflix, on demand. You had to be there or be square. So That's the last time I remember waking up at like try, deliberately trying to wake up at seven. When you didn't have to. When I didn't have to, so I could get in there, get my cereal, get my my buttered toast, and sit my my little butt in front of the TV, like so close that your mom would yell at you. It's gonna ruin yeah. your eyes, and I'm like, no, it's, it's this big, mom, relax. <laughs> it's like this. It's like if I put like I made a cardboard uh, visor, so it made it look like a, a movie theater screen. <laughs> so we did we did the cereal but we also did the uh the buttered toast that you'd cook in the oven with uh with the brown sugar and the cinnamon and that was like your your cinnamon toast crunch breakfast cereal on toast i don't know why we thought that was so good but it was i tried it as an adult and i'm just it wasn't hitting it for me i was a sugar weird kid cream. i was really into life life cereal at, give it to mikey he'll eat anything and i think it was i think i was a uh a byproduct of good advertising. 
So I'd be there with my my bowl of life cereal and then like my overly buttered toast where I'm I'm tasting more butter than bread, which is how it should be made anyway. Very Texan of you. And dipping it into my cereal. (laughs) Then the butter gets in there. Oh yeah. That's a good time. So so what was yours? uh, What was your breakfast cereal of choice when you were watching these cartoons there, Matt? Uh, I mean, life is, is right there. Life. And, um, Oh my gosh, I don't even, I'm trying to remember what the cereal was called. It was called, it wasn't pops. It was, uh, like another one of those, like corn, Corn maybe it was corn puffs or something like that. It was, I don't even think maybe it was corn pops. Maybe I'm trying to remember what, now I can't even remember the the name of the cereal because I don't think it exists anymore, but I remember, yeah, I would like, you get up and you heat those and then just. But I also had a, a little sister, so I'd have to make sure that she had a bowl so she would shut up and just like, look, just sit yeah. watch your cartoons and don't do it. It was corn pops. It was corn pops. Okay, corn pops. So yeah, it was corn pops. Um, but then I also remember like I didn't do the toast thing. My my parent, my mom is from New York. So the whole cinnamon toast, sugar toast thing, that was something my wife introduced to our younger kids. I was like, What are you making? She's like, Everybody eats this. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. but um, it's a summer thing. I don't know. We had it all the time. Thing. Yeah, it wasn't until I was a teenager where I started sprinkling cinnamon on my. On my oh toast. no, we did sugar or brown sugar and cinnamon. Sometimes both the sugars and butter, yeah. and then you you bake it in the oven yeah. for a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so that's so, that's definitely a southern thing. It's so good. I couldn't eat it now because calories, but I mean, if I had my like. 12 year old metabolism again. I'd sure as hell do that. Oh yeah. Who, who's worried about diabetes when you're 12? <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, it was, um, cinnamon raisin or no, not cinnamon raisin. Uh, the raisin brand. I love those with a little bit of sugar or, uh, frosted flakes. Uh, those were Ooh, good as yeah. well. It's and the then great. the stolen valor cereal of choice, otherwise known as captain crunch berries, because you know, he says he's a captain, but he's wearing commander stripes on his uniform. And he's been in so long, you should be a damn admiral by now. (laughs) They've actually, that was a running joke for a while in the military circles. And then they they did the new art for it. And he's actually got the four bars of a captain on his uniform now. They promoted him. (laughs) Thank God. But uh, Lieutenant Commander rank and stuff. I wonder if you go back far enough if he actually was. If they just sort of promoted him along the way and nobody caught it. Just like KFC for a while, their Twitter account was only following... Um, the original Spice Girls and a bunch of guys named Herb. Yeah. <laughs> until, somebody caught and got, until somebody caught it and they got like free KFC for life. He died of a heart attack, I'm sure, by now. Uh, right. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a thing. Man, 80s, not only do they have the best cartoons, some of the best commercials. That oh, was, David, that's, a, that's a whole other episode. Yeah. You know, we actually, we might have to. But okay, so we've covered what we ate with our, with our um, cartoons. So... What was your favorite? Like, do you have any that are sort of seminal to your childhood? I, I mean, I early childhood, it was Star Blazers and Speed Racer. Like, I remember waking up and watching those because I think it's different too. Uh, you know, I've, I've said this a couple of times in other podcasts, but it's like cable changed the landscape of the fact that we could all watch the same thing. When I was really little, like, whatever the UH, the cartoon the UHF station bought that those are the cartoons you got to see. So depending yeah. on what city you lived in and what your UHF station got, you got some of those, but you know, the main stations had the, uh, you know, the, the normal ones, but yeah, I remember um, the first one I remember really loving was star blazers, which eventually I found out was called space battleship Yamato and then um, speed racer. So that, those are the early ones. But um, I think my favorite one, as I got older was uh was Mighty Orbots. Like I loved Mighty Orbots when I was a when I was like that a 10 11 years old uh, phase of my life. And yeah. Um yeah, I was I was born in the late 70s, so um, I was getting a lot of uh 70s cartoons. You know, by the time I I, le- I remember watching cartoons in like 83 84, you know, that's when you're old enough to like kind of fend for yourself as a Gen Xer, you know, the last of the feral children. Yeah. Um, so I remember watching Voltron and Robotech, you know, whatever was on TV, um, cause we didn't get GI Joe until 86. So, um, yeah, it was Voltron and Robotech. I was, I was into the mechs, 
because that's really all I had. And that definitely influenced me. Um, and the funny thing is I can't draw a mech to save my life unless I'm paid an exorbitant amount of money. Thanks, JR. Um, so yeah, it was those two cartoons that I really liked. Um, you know, the, the changing, the mechs, the battle mechs that were changing into other, you know, kind of like gestalt theory, you know, the, the Veritech Some fighters and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, a bunch of fighters come together to build a, a you know, the, the whole is not as important as the sum of its parts. So I, I really enjoyed those. Um, and then, like, I, yeah, I watched Care Bears. I, I was fine with that. Um, you know, and yeah, then Gummy, Bear. I, Gummy Bears. Yeah, I was a big fan of that because it was, it was Disney and anything Disney was gold, especially in, in the 80s. And bro, that gummy bear show has some intense lore. That's amazing. Like I've I've rewatched it with my kids and going like, oh, yeah, that's right. There was like a whole world there. Like it's it is incredible for a Saturday morning cartoon. What how deep that show went. It didn't need to go that oh, hard. Yeah, that that theme song went hard too. Gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere. Okay. Have you heard the Mikey Mason um, 1980s cartoons? Then, like, it's all, it's like a ballad of just the theme songs. And as he jumps from one to the other, somehow they string together perfectly. And I'm just like naming them off uh, as he's singing. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. I watched that one. Ooh, nostalgia. You see that a lot on the Tiki Talks, you know, yeah. doing the mashups. And you're like, hey, you know, retweet this or stitch this if you recognize like more than four and they're like just rattling off all the theme songs from these 80s cartoons and i'm like damn i'm old and it's time for my back pill yeah. <laughs> or, or was it the, the the lead singer of panic at the disco he he sings the ducktales theme song oh, yeah. while he was on jimmy fallon show the one day that was hilarious he's just all in on it just in it yeah so that was uh, that's before while punk was still punk before punk became corporate, which I never thought I'd live to see that happen. But uh, everybody yeah. sells out eventually. Yeah, and the money's big enough. I'll sell out too. I'm sure. Damn right. Yeah, just enough to buy that homestead, right? Then I'll go back to speaking my truth. Um, oh, yeah. So for me, uh, I do remember the Dungeons and Dragons cartoons, and I remember like some of my friends weren't allowed to watch it because like it was going to make them worship the devil or something. Witchcraft. Yeah. Or maybe if you played it backwards, it was supposed to make you worship the devil. I just remember devils were involved and yeah. why some of my friends couldn't watch it. But that um, required taking a blank VHS or recording over an older VHS. So you and they didn't play it backwards. It was like impossible. I don't know. I, I never understood the whole. Parents were really backwards. weird. Uh, that was also the time of the whole satanic panic era. Yeah. yeah. So I remember <laughs> Adventures of Teddy Rockspin, which was basically like a cartoon version of Reading Rainbow. So it was like the yeah. adventure, like take a look, it's in a book kind of thing. Um, well, Jordy LaForge, that, that actor was the... Uh, yeah. Lamar Burton. Burton. Lamar, Lamar Burton. Burton, yeah. He actually has an adult version of that now where he like talks about short stories and books on a podcast. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Lamar, it's called the Lamar, Lamar version of like... Yeah. 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 <laughs> And it's surprising. I don't want to see LeVar Burton reading a penthouse. I'll just tell you that. I'm <laughs> I think the coolest thing about that was when COVID started and he was like, hey, authors, please authorize me to read stuff for kids. I really appreciate it. And Neil Gaiman was like, my whole library, bro. You yeah, can have you all go. my library. Read as you will. And I was like, that's cool as hell right there. Yeah. yeah we already knew Neil was a class act. But that just solidified it. Yeah. yeah. So I then there was Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Awesome show. I remember that one. Is that the eighties or yeah, no, it was late eighties, but it was eighties. Fraggle yeah. Rock. I, I used to watch there's that. that there's that uh gray area with like eighty eight to ninety two where yeah. you're like, uh, oh, was it did it start yeah. in the eighties or was it the nineties? We we had that discussion show when we were prepping for a lot of them, but but Fraggle Rock was one of the tie breaking type shows because you know they had like three or four channels that would do Saturday morning cartoons, so you're hopping around trying to get just the right lineup and you're trying to perfect your lineup so you can get all the things. And well, okay, well this one's going to rerun later in the day, so I can watch this instead. It was I mean oh, we you had to know your channels time. back then, bud. It's like okay, these cartoons are are on CBS, and then I got switched to NBC, and then we're going to finish it off in ABC. See. I'm yeah. just saying that the generation that grew up planning our TV morning to optimize our cartoon experience is also the guys that play like Magic the Gathering and chess because they're brain thinking games. You had to be like 3D chess that crap to get the optimum viewing experience because you couldn't. Probably why like a lot of Gen X became like B 
bean counters, accountants. Yeah, I, I, like that. I, I wouldn't be surprised. But Fraggle Rock was one my sister and I could both agree on because she was all about like the strawberry shortcake and uh, Rainbow Bright where I was like G.I. Joe. Peter Pan we agreed on. And that was like our morning before school too. Uh, Peter Pan and Chip and Dale were two that we could agree on. I was actually a Rainbow Bright fan when I was younger. I was all those colors as a as a young kid, I was like, "Oh, this is amazing!" Probably yeah. I had Care Bears too. Inspector Gadget was always nice because he had all the things. Oh, yeah. Although I didn't really think the bad guy was baddie enough. I like I, I never quite the understood. The cat was more evil. I yeah. know. <laughs> he had more and, of a presence than just that arm. Yeah, yeah. The Inspector metal Gadget arm was more. He was kind of like, I don't know how to say this politely. He was so. Beta to his his niece, like she was basically the star of the show. She was the one that was dog. making him look good. Yeah, yeah. Penny, was Penny. The yeah. Was the dog's name Gizmo. What was the dog's no, name? Uh, Sprocket. Sprocket. No, Sprocket. Someone from Fraggle Rock, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna test Google my that. typing skills here. <laughs> Inspector Gadget. Brain. Dog. It was named as Brain. 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 There you go. And I, I got beat because I, I had a stroke. You get a pat. <laughs> we'll uh, forgive you yeah. this time. Yeah, there we'll were so many you. letters on the left side of that keyboard. My left hand was like, mm, okay, we're trying. We're trying, boss. We're doing all we can. But ALF, the cartoon version, because it was also like a, a live action type deal. But ALF, yeah. the animated series, was great. Great uh, theme song. Yeah. And I just, he made me like love aliens. Like the whole concept of aliens for me started with ALF. Him I wanted and, to visit Melmac so bad. And, and well, this isn't a cartoon, but uh, Mork and Mindy was the other one. Uh, um, um, Robin Williams was Mork from Ork. That was another one. Those between those two shows, that solidified my love of the like the idea of alien species. Started there. Um, if you want to know why Nick is so screwed up for him, it was Predator and Aliens. That explains a lot mm -hmm. too. If you think about it. Yeah, and I downloaded the wrong movie, and that got weird. And, <laughs> uh, and the other one that was a tiebreaker, my sister and I could always agree on, was Pound Puppies. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, I had one. Yeah, we had the those. Those were always the monsters when we played with the G.I. Joes because they were so big comparatively to like the, the little tinier G.I. Joes. Um, yeah. So that would be like um, if we ever did the never-ending story, that was like the giant dog that they would ride to fly because reasons. Definitely. Let's get on uh, the the biker Falcor. Uh, biker pound. Falcor. Yeah. So, uh, did you Turn guys like pound puppies Rundar in the barbarian? Which one? Which one? Rundar the barbarian. That one. Oh, like, oh yeah, that, that was part of the Hanna Barbera hour. The yeah, sun, that was Conan the before sword. I found him. I mean, oh, I'm oh, sure oh, it was it was oh, a knockoff oh. of Conan, but I found that first, which then led into my love of Conan the franchise. He had that. He had a Sasquatch with him. Yeah. Um, he had like Who a gelatinous. Yeah, the gelatinous dude <laughs> with a look like a ghost. I yeah. think we're the Herculoids now. Oh yeah. shit! Okay, once again, Hanna Barbera hour. <laughs> yeah, Hanna Barbera. Yeah, that was a, a powerhouse at one point in time. Thundercats was good. I know yep. uh, it doesn't qualify for the later discussion because they did reboots of it. But Thundercat, ho! Oh, I yeah. actually didn't mind the reboot either. It was okay. I, Which reboot? The, like the first yeah. reboot or the one that looked. The Thundercats really Roar bad. one or the 2011 one? The 2011. My, I watched that one with my kids, and it wasn't that bad. I mean, I don't like the art style, but the stories were okay. Yeah, it was I think it was one of those where I feel like sometimes they'll reboot something like, dude, we've got to, like, this has got to be serious. You're like, guys, it wasn't serious in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Have, have some so, fun. Yeah. Relax. We don't have to get into it, all it was serious. <laughs> it was serious for us when we were, like, six to eight years old. But see, yeah. that's just it. Like back then, cartoons didn't try to be serious. They were just fun. Like you mentioned, you watched one and you were telling me in the pre-show where it's like, wait a minute, the physics of this just don't work. What was that show you were telling it's me? In the like so it was the several hawks. When you go Silver back Hawk, and yeah. watch it, like the entire solar system has breathable air and, and gravity. And you're like, yeah. you don't think about it when you're a kid. You're just like, dude, look, they're they're partly metal, partly real. Look at them fighting all these guys. And then you watch it as an adult, you're like, he's outside of his ship talking to people while they're <laughs> traveling through planets. And when he falls off of it, he falls down. He doesn't just float next. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whatever. Fine. He's in a galaxy where there's gravity even out in space. Yeah. It's perfect. Well, maybe, maybe he's got an invisible 
uh, suit force field around him so he can breathe and talk, but that doesn't affect the gravity. So I got nothing. I, was say, I, I, don't, I don't think writers were that clever back then. Nor did they have to be. Nobody cared. Yeah. And the then fact- DuckTales was another good one. DuckTales is good. Yeah. The theme song for that was, it's, it's one of those little earworm type songs too. I, I would, oh, we would discuss that, but the music part of it will get us copyright stricken. Uh, if we every even- time you jump into a, you know, silo of money, you're going to swim through it instead of break your neck. Yes. I mean, exactly. and he's spitting out points like it's water, like he's yeah. spitting out. Uh, although I don't hate Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck. I want to be Scrooge McDuck. I want that much money. I don't, I don't hate I want the that. Stuff. Yeah. I want to be the rich. I want people. that silo. I yeah, want the I silo of gold coins, especially what, what gold's going for right now. And then this is very much a product of the eighties, but Mr. T, I pity the fool, the cartoon, oh, yeah. cereal, the the uh, the jewelry you could I, get that was cosmetic. The cereal mm-hmm. was Captain Crunch without the like, berries. berries. Yeah, yeah. it was the same cut well, your gums cereal. He used to be in the army. Did you know that? Yeah, Mr. T was a was a vet. Uh, yeah, he was and in the belt, first, I think. Yeah, he he had the belt that he would wear all the time. It was part of his like the the wrestlers was it WWE or I don't WWF know, I don't, back then? Yeah, World Wrestling Federation. And then that was when they had a lot of the um, the dinosaurs were big back in the eighties. So you had like Dino Saucers, Dino Riders, Dink the little dinosaur were all good. I used to love those. But they, they started putting them. the Dinobots in with the Transformers. Yeah, yeah. and then of course, you know, and then in the nineties they carried that over when the um, um, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had the Dino episodes. Yeah, I mean, well, that was the um, first season. Uh, yeah, that was the first season. Yeah. Her. Power that Rangers. was when you know you're grown up because no one asks you what your favorite dinosaur is anymore. That's so lame. Yeah. I know. <laughs> like you're an adult, but not like on purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's just age. I mean, I didn't really grow up. Growing yeah. up so getting Toys older, more expensive. Just... But uh, and last for me, do you guys remember the Ghostbusters cartoon based on the first set of movies? Yeah. The, the real Ghostbusters or the new Ghostbusters? Because there's two um, different Ghostbusters cartoons. Yeah, there's one Ghostbusters. with a, a gorilla, that was a gorilla from Town and Country Surf Company. Yeah. Now this was the the real Ghostbusters cartoon yes. that came out in the '80s. I didn't know there was a reboot of that one. There's not. No. There's there was a there show was a, around the same two, time yeah. called the called the Ghostbusters. And oh, I didn't find that one. A, when I my press. There's a gorilla in there. Yeah, it was basically there was like a serials from like I want to say the sixties or seventies called the Ghostbusters, and when they made the movie, they didn't clear things, and, but because it's a movie, they didn't have to go. But once they made the cartoon, it had to be like the real Ghostbusters. The real Ghostbusters is what the one's called, based on the movies, and the other one's called like the original Ghostbusters or just the, it's just it's a nonsense. But yeah, I watched both of them, and you know, look, you, you, when when you Love have Garfield. Most. Garfield's voicing uh, Vakeman. I'm all. I'm all in. I don't care. Yeah, uh, and, and some of them. And it's Egon like, had a ponytail. It was awesome. It was, that was great. Yeah, that's a lot he, of weird. He was blonde. Yeah. All right, you guys vape. I just realized I forgot to plug in my laptop, and it's warning me. So I will listen, but I may disappear. Well, as we'll, I go. we'll go ahead and air that beautiful <laughs> bean footage, and we're going to do our commercial real quick. Uh, and this time, I'm we're sponsoring the episode, so you're welcome. And hell yeah, go. What will you do when the world goes belly up? Will you paint stripes on your cheeks, grab your flaming guitar, and enjoy the glorious post-apocalypse party? Or will you gnash your teeth and wail at the loss of civilization? Either way, we've a story for you. This post-apocalyptic collection has 15 great stories, each with its own spin on our future. Dive right into From the Ashes, a Bayonet Books anthology, before the future becomes now. Well, some of that's already happened, and we lost Nick. Man down, man down. We're going to keep going anyway. Thank you for sticking with us through that commercial interlude. He thought he had a little bit more time to uh, refresh his beverage. so uh, Yeah, that was wrong. <laughs> we're going to carry the show without him. And uh, while, we're, while we're doing that, dear listener, dear viewer, if anything we've discussed, if you've got like ideas you think we should talk about, come back. We'll do a, a second cartoon episode. We can do the 90s, the 2000s. Like There is a lot of room in the nostalgia of cartoons that are near and dear to our hearts that uh, we can come back for. So tell us what we missed. Tell us what you'd add. Join the discussion in the comments section on the BitChute Rumble YouTube. Uh, talk oh. to us 
here on the Spotify or join us on the face space where all the cool kids hang out in our uh, group, all of it linked in our link tree, which we will, we'll get to at the end of the show. Uh, but it's like that, I've said, I'm, I'm an adult in name only a grown up in name only. I still watch cartoons. I was watching uh, Max Fleischer's Superman last night. Cause it's on Tubi now. So, well, and nice. I, I always, I was thinking about it earlier and it's like, because my kids are so spread out because I have, my oldest is 27 and then I have a stepdaughter who's 17 and then my wife and I have kids together, son who's 11 and a daughter who's five. So even though it's not exactly why I still watch cartoons, I've always had somebody who's age appropriate in my life to watch cartoons. With. So there's cartoon like we, oh, we yeah. were, I literally watched the last half of the first season of Moon Girl again this afternoon because oh, I started watching it and it was just like we just didn't stop. And that show is great. If you guys haven't watched Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, is that on art. the Disney Plus? It's on Disney Plus. If you didn't know you needed Lawrence Fishburne, voice in the Beyonder, singing a song about how he was going to destroy humanity, you now have been informed and need to go watch that episode. I think right. he was always the voice before he even got cast as the voice. It's just you read The Watcher and Lawrence Fishburne. Well, it was it's it's funny. Did I say Watcher? The Beyonder. I'm sorry. He's the Beyonder. Beyonder. I'm sorry. The Beyonder. But it, the funny thing I, is, I messed up. <laughs> he narrates the show, and it's not till the seventh episode that he reveals himself to be the Beyonder. So then he continues to narrate the show, but now you know he's a Beyonder. So he shows up as the Beyonder to to narrate things now. So it's it's brilliant because you're just like the first couple of episodes, like why is Lawrence Fishburne narrating the show? Like, sure, why not? And then when he finally appears as a Beyonder, you're like, totally makes sense. Totally makes sense. It's beautiful. It's 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 and a great that show. I don't that's not his first MCU role. I mean, he was also Goliath in uh it was Goliath, yeah. And yeah. So if you guys haven't watched it, if you're and it's there's it's like 12 30 minute episodes, it's great. So can't check beat it out. that. It's it's hilarious. Um <laughs> So I'm going to become the host now since we lost Jr. So what about you, Nick? What is a? Uh... I'm still here. I was just listening to you go. It was it was literary and in, in like cold. And then the minute I unmute, he's like dying. His lungs are hacking out of his chest. I know. That's why I'm not drinking coffee tonight. Is I I've I'm on the back end of getting over the flu. Anytime uh, I drink hot coffee, it like seems to go like, hey, you should poop your pants while you're talking. So <laughs> that's my kind of coffee. That's so, army grade. Yeah. That's army grade. Yeah. As much as the, I the like flash that, to, yeah. as the as flash like to bang on army coffee. At the same time, it's not the same kind oh, of yeah. thing. But we're but not yeah. that kind of show, people. Yeah. <laughs> that's for the after hours. Yeah. That's it. That, we don't deal in Finkel matter and it's a uh, caffeinated response. Fair enough. Yet. That was my understanding, which is why I'm not drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what are the three? Now, we've kind of gone all over the place of the nostalgia of what we remember from our childhood and the iconic theme songs. Uh, I don't know that I would want to redo any of the theme songs, but there are certainly a couple we, we would love to see rebooted. So I'm going to go to you first, Matt. What would be the first one you would want to reboot? I mean, <sighs> It's my number one, but I know everybody's talked about it. So let's go ahead and get it out of the way. It's Silverhawks. Like, I just cannot fathom that they have not redone the show. Um, it was one of those shows that came later in the, I want to say later in the 80s, but later in that time frame where everybody was making cartoons based on, on toys. Yeah, it came out so, in 86. Correct. So at that point, instead of it being Saturday morning cartoons, they become syndicated afternoon shows. So even though it's only technically one season, there's like 65 episodes of that one season. And um, I just thought it's just a cool concept. In my opinion, it is the second coolest spaceship to ever exist is the Mirage, the, the, the plane, the jet that they fly around in, Falcon being the first. But um, just I just thought it was a cool idea. I mean, it's just the most sci-fi thing ever to have somebody... Give them cybernetics. Now they can fly and shoot lasers and have cool masks and fight crime and fly in this jet, go to a different solar system. Like it's just ripe for a reboot. And the fact that no one has touched it ever just blows my mind. I don't get how, especially with the success that Netflix got out of Voltron. Like I would yeah. think now I know the toys didn't do anywhere near what 
some of these other toy lines did. Yeah. But I don't know if Netflix is really concerned about selling toys. Obviously they're not because the Voltron toys only lasted for about two seasons of that show and the season show went on five, six more seasons and they just got rid of the toys altogether. But that would be the, I think my first is Silverhawks. Like I just think it's, you could literally almost just update a little bit everything as far as dialogue's concerned. Or, and graphics. I mean, if, I don't. I mean, they're, they're not that bad if you go back and look at them. Maybe no, the, have, the animation was top top tier. Yeah, Maybe yeah but you're, gonna, you're gonna have to make them uh, compatible with four, with HD, or it's not gonna work. It'll be blurry and small. You gotta you gotta do some some smoothing over the rough edges, I think, and filling out those pixels. It depends on how they captured all the information, because since it's animation, depending on how they were shooting it at the time, they may be able to easily upgrade it. But my point more is that the concept itself is not. Um, it's not like when you watch RoboCop and you're like, wow, that's the future. That's, you know, so 40 years ago. Yeah, right. I think Silverhawks was far enough in the future that like it's still futuristic. It's still cool. It's still stuff that would be interesting. The only thing I think we laughed about is like, depending on when you watch the show now, like some of the, the, when they, when copper kid is in the thing and bluegrass is teaching him stuff, there's one where it's like, there are nine planets. And at the time there were only eight. And my daughter was like, there's not nine planets. <laughs> where were we were kids? Shut up. Pluto still count. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. They'll bring it's it a back. Planetoid right now. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> they go back here. Here. I'm just saying that I, I have a t-shirt that says, Dear NASA, I was big enough for your mom, son Pluto. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Silverhawks had a uh, had a space text in that. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, I don't know. There's a lot of fertile ground to explore the lore to, because that is they left a lot of lore that was just sort of there, but then they didn't really do anything with it. And I think audiences nowadays expect more from the plot, from the lore. So there's there's definitely enough room. There's enough there there to make it worth it. Like, I don't know that G.I. Joe, for all, you know, we grew up with it. I don't know that they were as heavy in the lore as some of the other shows out there. And I know we're going to get some hate mail. Not really. I just, I never felt like the lore was as deep no. as some of the other shows. Yeah. I think it was, G.I. Joe was pretty basic compared to some of the other ones, like Thundercats or Soul Rocks. You know, there was yeah. a deep rooted lore. I mean, hell, even Gummy Bears had a deep rooted lore. That wow. surprised me until like when you told me that I did a quick little Google search. I'm like, oh, okay. It was deeper than I thought. Cause as a kid, you just watch, oh, they're pretty colors. And right? like the whatever. But so I'm the, amazed there's not a ride in Disney of the gummy bears. Cause that that's the trick with the, with the cartoons and some of the good ones that are classics did this. They had just enough of the mature humor in there that the kids wouldn't get, but the adults watching it with them didn't want to pull their eyes out. And yeah. the shows that don't do that, like a Caillou, like parents are like, that's never allowed in my house. I will shoot somebody. Because it was like, it, it didn't balance. Like a Popeye, like if you listen to some of what he said under his breath, and I'm like, oh, salty sailor, right? Dude, and, Robotech, uh, what was the cousin's name? And which one? Uh, Robotech? Robotech. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It depends she, on which version. The, there, there was some ancestral... Suggestions? Implications? Suggestions going on between first cousins. I mean, with, if they're uh, royalty, Rick Hunter and uh, what was her name? Start with an M. Mune. Well, the, the the problem with some of that too is like you also don't know what's translated poorly. You right. know, True. if you watch the you watch the original Maycross with the subtitles, it's a completely different show. It's oh like, yeah. Um, what's it called? Saber Rider and the Star Sheriff. So I don't know if you guys ever saw that. I yep. used to love that show. That show is not about what they make that show to be about. The the guy who drives the car in the original anime is the lead of the show. And instead of it was Saber Rider, they make the dude with the the Calvary guy like he's yeah. the leader. That's not even what the show's about. <laughs> I had those I had those figures too. Yeah. Those guys that was another one that was really cool. But I think that's in more 90s than it was okay. 80s. So I was gonna say my first on the list was Johnny Quest because I remember watching it on Saturday morning cartoons and I just Googled it in the pre-show. I'm like, crap, that was from the 60s. Because I watched it in the 80s. So that would be because Johnny Quest well, people, the difference between cover and concealment. It depends on what you watch, too, because there's the adventures of Johnny Quest from the 60s. And there was like they've rebooted that show a couple times. So if Ray Bannon went around killing everybody in every episode, that's the 60s one. If you never saw him kill anybody, 
That's the eighties one. I must have watched the eighties one because the the death always was implied or off scene or no 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 because we because my son is based off my son's name is Race and it's because of Johnny Quest and okay. I bought the DVDs and he was like six I was like hey this is where your name comes from and we watched the first episode and in that first episode Race Bannon kills like thirty guys and I was like no we're gonna wait for a little while to we watch this again because I forgot <laughs> this is a sixties cartoon not for kids and he would just. That's- just killed. He ran over two guys with a, a boat. <laughs> I, I just remember them hiding behind like actual things that would stop a bullet instead of like this random thin like plywood board that yeah. somehow <laughs> they're high in some cartoons. But, like that's not stopping stop anything. Forty five caliber rounds. It's like right. uh, you just so, got shot up by a Tommy yeah. gun, so you should um, be dead. I, and originally, I thought maybe Mr. T, but I don't think that'll stand the test of time. I think that's too locked in a, a product of its time. You'd be surprised because um, mostly it's adults watching those old ones, you know, going back into the nostalgia. Tubi's been great for that. They have tra- the old Transformers, the 80s version, and G.I. Joe. They got Silverhawks in there. It used to be on Crunchyroll. Jed Voltron, Gem, which even then, you know, it's like that show really wasn't designed or made for me. You yeah. still watch it because Gem got into shit. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was a. It was a girl show that was designed so the boys would not change the channel because it was surrounded by G.I. Joe and Transformers. So they right. wanted and the animation the was top stay. notch. Yeah. yeah. The music wasn't half bad for its and size. Music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's so like you got this this Joan Jet type. I mean, obviously she wasn't modeled after Joan Jet, but like <laughs> during that time, guys listened to Joan Jet and the Black yeah. Arts. You know, we we were it, we listened to Heart. You know, we'd listen to that type of stuff. So to have that type of character who, I don't know, she's like a private detective or she just got, she just into, got into trouble all the time. Just, fighting just got into the trouble. Yeah. Every time, every time she toured, every place she went to, she, she found trouble. And at first she's like, oh, this is a girl's show. And then you start watching it. It's kind of like when you're an adult with a wife, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, you got to see this. I'm like, I'm not watching this. It looks dumb. And then you're like, hey, what happened? I think I missed an episode because what happened with yeah. that character? Why are they doing this? Now? <laughs> so, Why did they butter their pan that way? I don't understand. I need to know how this, this I bank don't turned out. Oh God. The <laughs> reality shows it's, it's the same way. It's the adult version of watching Jim as a man. Yeah. You know, you're like, Oh, I'm not watching. This is stupid. And next thing you know, you're sitting on the couch, you got your beverage of choice and you're like, okay, so who's that person? And then your little yeah. sister's explaining it to you or your wife late years later. You know, so yeah. it's it this it don't change. So I guess my first one to keep it in the realm of it hasn't been rebooted already, and it's from the eighties. I guess I'm going with Thundar the Barbarian because he gave that Conan vibes. I wonder if you could get away with that if, if the if the copyright would for Conan if it's close enough. I feel like watching it, it's very much an homage or a, a copycat of the Conan vibe. But I don't know like enough about the lore between the two to see if if it's it'd be legit. I think that one, they don't look anything alike. Two, the Sun Sword definitely separates them. But also, like the whole basis of Thundar is it's post-apocalyptic, so that yeah. completely separates him from Conan. Yeah, yeah I, but I, I like the the basic like adventure, the men's adventure fiction kind of vibe for little boys. Um, I think we've worried so much in modern society about the strong female characters. And I don't have a problem with that. Like, I mean, who didn't want, love Ellen Ripley, right? Like, come on. Right. Uh, Xena, warrior princess. Like, I, I, we didn't have any problem with well-written female characters. But I also think there's something to be said for for giving the men, young boys, something they can aspire to that isn't just the dunce in somebody else's story, right? Like, yeah. right. Homer Simpson character. Like, maybe the dad can actually, I don't know, be the good guy instead of just a moron. <laughs> Yeah, right. uh, and so that's one of the reasons that Deep Space Nine, because like the dad was the good guy, and he was a good father. You know, and like, he's one of my favorite Starfleet captains. Right. And so for me, like Thundar, it was when when they didn't try to slam political messages that kids didn't need one way or another, left or right. Like it was just, hey, be good people and do ro- good things. And oh, by the way, here's a fun little show. Like I like that. It was so innocent. In a way, and it was family oriented too, because yeah. his whole group that was his family. Um, and yes, it, it yeah. also covered a lot of the idea uh, of the everyman hero with some of his entourage. And you see a lot of the concept of found family as well for those who, you know, maybe 
maybe life dealt you a raw hand and your family sucks, but you can build your own family, so to speak. Right. And have that same kind of that same bond, right? And get the same. Yeah, between that and the Fantastic Four, I mean, there was nobody else pushing that kind of message. Was the Fantastic Four eighties? Fantastic yeah. Four came out in the sixties. Uh, the car- okay. there was a cartoon in the, and uh, I think it was in the sixties, and then it was in the nineties. I remember yeah, the nineties. I didn't think it was eighties, but yeah. So for me, my second one, my first one would be. I was talking more of the comics, but oh, okay. Uh, yeah, for, as far for as me. visual mediums that inspire children. That make yeah, you want to be a comic book artist. Yeah, I would say Thunder of the Barbarians would be my first one. And now, Nick, you get to tell us which one you'd bring back, if any. Well, I would. You guys stole my answers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm in complete agreement. So, Silverhawks, I think um, there's a lot of lore in there that if you focus on the lore and you're able to, like, uh, you got to keep the animation sharp and clean because that's what I remember about. Silverhawks is that the animation was really clean. It was really sharp. It it was very visually stunning. You know, I think that's probably what kept me. I don't. I couldn't even tell you, you know, what the story was per episode because I was just watching the action. I was watching the the visuals because I'm a visual guy. Um, and then Thundar the Barbarian. Hell yeah! I remember my there was one Halloween I wanted to be Thundar. And my mom's gonna be saying. Um, I remember my mom telling me no because she wasn't gonna because she she could sew. She's like. I don't even know where to find the materials to make that costume. Secondly, I'm not having my son half naked running around the neighborhood. I'm like, that's bad, I guess. <laughs> well, okay. hey, speaking of Silverhawks, if there was like one or two things you would change besides like some of the, the you know, the story, what is something you would change about it if you could update? The physics, I would make them follow the laws of physics. Like you don't, if you fall out of the ship, one, you're not breathing air. Yeah. Or if you're going to do that, you got to explain it. You got to hand wave it a little bit. Yeah, like yeah. maybe because a lot of a lot of those designs, um, even though they would go full face shield, yeah, I thought that was cool because they would be open face and they get in the battle, you know, full face shield, and they that's when they looked cool. And I think the toys really missed the mark on that one, big time. Because because yeah, you can give me a full faced person in that character, but give me a detachable head or. Um, you know, a face plate or something. Like, yeah. Fa- yeah. Face plate or something like, cause I remember having toys that did have magnets, it magnets in there where you could just put things on there and, and change their look. Um, so I changed that Ma- mainly the physics cause the story was good from what I remember. But then again, I was like eight. Yeah. So, um, if you follow the ship, um, you're just going to float around a little bit unless, unless you explain it, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't think they really needed to at that, time because it was just mindless entertainment to entertain children so it was bright flashes lasers there's things just like oh you know it was uh, brain candy you know yeah. eye candy so i would definitely change that um I would you make, can make so i'll oh, go make, ahead i would make the copper kid talk his little whistles got yeah. annoying just let him talk yeah if that, i was gonna change that's something. bringing back memories too i was like oh yeah he didn't talk uh, I always got the impression that the ship they were on had a base ship somewhere that they didn't really get into. I'd like to see, cause how does that ship support itself? Like right. for the mission. So I would like to see okay. more on the space side, like the, the, the back end, I guess make the, the more in depth plot would be what I would change. Add to it. Give it more of and a more the Texan character. I would like to make him look like Logan, AKA Wolverine. I, I would, <laughs> that hat, he definitely needs like, metallic mutton, mutton chops like maybe it looks like uh like little blades or whatever i oh god i might draw that yeah i, I always thought like the thing that always cracked me up that i when i because we talked about silver hawks in, in the previous podcast i did is like why did stargazer suddenly decide one day i need other people here i always thought like would have been a really cool story was that there had been a team there before they got killed and that the five Silverhawks that sent there are replacing them. And that's why you have like Backlash and um, Hot Wing that are there. They're the guys who survived the previous versions of Silverhawks being killed. And that these new Silverhawks are coming in to try and fix whatever happened. Okay, so let me ask you this for both of you. Because there's always the thing when you want to redo series. Like they've talked about redoing Firefly. Yeah, but you're not going to get the actors to be able to do the original character. So the answer is always either take the actors that are alive and push the story forward 
or a replacement. So would you replace the uh, the original series of Silverhawks with the new one, or would you make this a successor to the Silverhawks with this reboot and have either the same characters years later or their replacements, and that is part of the lore now? Like, how would you approach it? I always clean slate. If you're going to reboot, clean slate it. Like, I, I don't... Unless there's a really just, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that's where we're going storyline. Like, just 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 restart. Like, okay. it, like, I don't know if enough people would go, oh, wow, Stargazer's dead, and that's Quicksilver running things now, and here's a new team of Silverhawks. Neat! Or if you just, like, just start over. Because like, I think that's what the best thing they did with the Voltron. Like, that He-Man one, the Revelation... Not only oh, is he writing dog shit, but it's like, why did you guys just clean slate that show? Why did you act like things were going on? It's it's terrible. I'll watch that crazy ass manga version <laughs> for kids that came out at the same time long before I ever watch any more of that. I'll watch the 90s version where he had <laughs> pants and short hair and before I ever watch He-Man <laughs> Revolution. You leave that moment alone. Revolution. It was a product of its time, sir. It's fine. It's it is all right. All right. So, so what would your second one be, Matt? Uh, Visionaries. I would reboot Visionaries. I thought that was such a cool concept that just got left to dust. And I think the biggest problem with that toy line is it was they tried to make it an original toy line by making it like a five inch figure instead of three inches, which everybody else yeah. is doing. And it was like that's cool and all, but now you can't use it with anything. You can't use them with G.I. Joe. You can't use them with He-Man. You can't, they don't fit anybody, but the concept was amazing. No, you had to, you had to wait till the insectoids came out because yeah. they were the same size. Yeah. So because I, I, I had the biggest crossover in the history of crossovers going on in my room when I was a kid with Visionaries versus Insectoids. Yeah. So I think that was the big thing. But I love this because it's this is another one where it's basically – all technology for some inexplicable reason just stops working just one day it's done. So they slowly over like a decade go back to medieval times. And then Merklin, i.e. Merlin comes back and says, Hey, I'm going to give you guys magic, but you have to do what I say. And that's where these guys get all their totems and their, the staffs and, you know, all that kind of stuff, because, you know, sheath my feet in a guy in gale, make swift my legs over line, I sail and you're taking off like mercury. Yes, that's how far my fandom of the show goes. So that's what you had to say. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm rarely out nerd. But, uh, Pass uh, off. To game you, recognizes sir. game. Game recognizes game. Hold on, I'm trying to think if I remember the other one. What's the other one? Um, oh, I can't remember the strong one anymore. Anyway, the, but I think that the the one with the, the bear. The one with the bear, the one who had the guy yeah. with the arrow, and I'm trying to remember what his his total, what his thing was. Um, but but the thing is, is that because these guys had lives before, there were episodes that were really cool. So, like in this picture, I don't know if everybody could see the picture. The guy in the blue and the yellow, or the blue and the white, he's the the fox, and he was actually a police detective. So in before everything changed. So there's an episode where him and another guy for the villain team who was a criminal have to team up to try and solve this crime in this world. Knights of the Magical Light. Okay, let's see where I can see this. I'm watching it on Amazon. Of a Shattered Age, I summon you, renew this. No, that was, no. Three sons align, pour forth their light, and fill the archer's bow with might. That's what it is. I got it. Sweet. <laughs> Your, your memory was better than my Google Foo, sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I was on, I, I just looked at it on IMDb, and what you just quoted was the first quote for quotes <laughs> in the series. Yeah. Three yeah. sons align, pour forth their might, and like, fill the archer's bow and might. And that's all it is. It's all the catchphrases. Because it was in, what in they the had to do to activate the, to the poles. Right. So, but no, did they come with the toys? Did they come with weapons? I don't remember. I thought they just came. They with had weapons. Like hologram stickers, if I remember correctly, when I was a kid. The the, um, the chest plates had had the holograms. There were stickers, but I think what it was is so the guy in the front he was a wolf, but he was the pilot, so he did not have a totem. He just came with the vehicle. So the guys who I'm not, I mean, he didn't have the poles. So the guys who had the poles were the figures you bought by themselves, 
And the guys who didn't have poles, they came with different vehicles. Because I remember this show now that you're power. talking about it, but I, I didn't remember it until I started looking at the art in prep. Yeah. And it was they were the the spectral knights. The bad guys were the the darkling lords. But it was just this really cool thing because they had some episodes where they'd go somewhere, and it was obviously a city that had destroyed that had just had crumbled over the decades. So there was just a ton of coolness you could do here. Given and there was only thirteen episodes too. Yeah, that so, was, like didn't run long at all. Um, but you you look at the reviews, and I don't know if it's nostalgia driven, but everybody seemed to love this damn show. Now I remember the show. I don't remember having the love for it like a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, probably because it, I was at a market and I only got to see like one or two. Yeah, and that's the thing too, is I think this is one of those shows that was not network TV. It was a UHF show. So if you were not in the right space, you'd not get to see it. But I, I right. really thought that there was a very interesting premise of people who had lives, everything ends, and now they have to become these guys. Right. And just something about that. There's just such a, that's just a, 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 a mine of so many different stories. Like this guy, who's the, the driver, was he a, a mechanic before? What did he do? You know, Leoric, who's the leader, like, was he a leader of men at the start of it? Do you get into the weird thing from like a uh, save it private Ryan, where he's just a math teacher, but because he's right. in the military as a captain, he's got to become this hardened guy to do this. So I, I think that there's so much you could do here, especially if you go a little longer form with it oh, as yeah. far as beyond just 12 episodes. And yeah. this and, wasn't yeah. on my list, but it is now. <laughs> <laughs> well, because also because of the way it was designed, like the vehicles are purely technology. They're powered by magic, but they're planes and they're tanks. So that stuff exists there. They just have to figure out ways to make it work. So I just think, you could just have a ball with this thing. Well, yeah. And especially, um, it seems like there are a bunch of, uh, it follows the reluctant hero trope, you know, cause like you said, all these people had lives before. Now they have to do these other lives in this new world, you know, that's set before them. So dude, you could run with that for well over 13 episodes. Oh yeah. Easy. I like, I like the reluctant hero. I don't yeah. want to do this, but I kind of have to do this to survive. It's also yeah. though the everyman hero because I mean like you're not talking like uh, titans of industry like you got like a, a beat cop detective and a, and a mechanic and like those are just Joe everybody. It could yeah. be you. It could be your neighbor. It could be your uncle. Well, I like I, that character. And I remember there's so the whole first episode is Merklin coming and saying to all the knights that live in this place like hey you have to come to my storm my castle whoever finds me gets this magic. And the two, the three guys that are in this picture, they're all friends and they're like, we're going to go. And he's like, I don't know. And the guy in the, the blue and white says, no, we have to do it. So at the end, when they finally achieve it and they get the magic and he turns into the fox for the first time and then turns back into a human, he just looks at me. He's like, I told you it would be worth it. And you're just like, yeah, this dude's just in it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Man, I'm getting emotional about this cartoon. Go, somebody else go before I start right. going on. This. <laughs> what would be uh, would be another one you would reboot? Me or Nick? Nick. Okay. Oh, um, I would like to see Macross remade. Robotech. That's been remade, hasn't it? No, it's had sequels. Yeah, but I'm talking like a, a like a starting from scratch. Reboot. Yeah, uh, or maybe. May, that was her name, um, isn't so interested in her cousin sexually. <laughs> Man, maybe maybe we get some family values here. I don't know. But I like I like the adventures of Rick Hunter. Um, I like the Veritech fighters. I got a few models that I love that are some of my prized possessions. Um, I loved what, what for me as a kid, what differentiated between Voltron one, it wasn't a whole bunch of mechs coming together. It was, they, they would turn into, they had di three different phases that they could turn into based on what kind of combat level they were. Yeah. And then, then you had the bikes too, which were awesome because the motorcycle would just become armor. And so you had humans inside there, you know, not giant sized Jaeger type um, yeah. mechanisms. Um, I, had a, I had a train of thought and I lost it. Derailed. But yeah, Robotech is probably something that I would definitely like to reboot. Um, 
it, it had a pretty good history, had a good backstory coming in. And, um, I, I think the villains were more organic. So, yeah. I think that's the trick I'm noticing is the shows that, that warrant the reboot, that, that build the love, are the ones that had the lore. Like if it's yeah. just like, oh, here's the bad guy, pew, pew, lasers, rinse and repeat, like, eh, okay, whatever. Like, but, but when there's deep lore there, when they took the time to build the world, suddenly you, you're more invested, I think, is the lesson. Yeah, so, um, because like there were shows that most people didn't – you didn't think they would watch, but like Gummy Bears. We, we've talked about it a couple times during the show is Gummy Bears had deep lore, and, and it, they explain it to you like from the very first episode what this lore was. You and know, they explored like, oh. it. Like the second then they season of that show, it. they go deep yeah. in it. And it went, it, that went on for like three or four seasons, maybe even five. I don't remember. Because um, eventually you age out and you stop watching. You know, you find other interests. Girls become a factor. Whatever. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. You know, but that's another show that should be remade is or rebooted. Um, give it, Give it the same... Um, animation quality that you had in the 80s because that was top-notch Disney animation. Yeah. You know? I mean, you could even CGI it. You could do 3D, um, you know, um, type modeling with it. But still, it had a, a, like you said, it has a lot of lore, and that's what kept it interesting. And even for kids, like, oh, God, because it added tension to almost every episode. Yeah. It, it wasn't was. just, oh, the, the gummy juice went missing. I don't know why. You yeah. Know? No. Okay. Um, I know um, for me that do you remember the cartoon Teen Wolf? Yes. It was it was six, car- I think it was brief. It was like a season. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really dug that one um, for some reason. I, I really liked it. I liked the idea of werewolves in general. Like, I think at some point in the future, if I ever have uh, like a free dance card that I haven't signed contracts for series that I'm working on. Like I'm definitely like I could see doing like some freaking um, lycanthrope story. Yeah, just because because werewolves are cool, right? And so that was the whole concept of this just this guy. What, what I like about the the movie and the cartoon series is that um, it wasn't like yeah, the yeah, grandma was the that. shit. The I grandpa was that. the shit. I remember like, that. I would um, want to upgrade. Like I want to bring it to modern times. I want to keep the grandpa because that was like like every grandpa you even if you didn't have a grandpa you wanted a grandpa like him right oh yeah like, he he was the the iconic stereotypical grandpa the annoying kid sister I could totally relate to that sorry if she's listening I, I um, too had an annoying kid sister <laughs> and so like and then it was like just man out of fish out of water kind of story right like yeah which is what it is he's he's trying to come to to terms with being werewolf being different well um, what I like is that it was uh it was passed on it was a it only affected the males of the family so it really kind of turned the tropes of you know lycanthropes werewolves kind of on their head where you had to be bitten you know you, the very you know the lon cheney jr wolfman story you know they, they blew that out of the water like hey we're gonna do our own thing and i think that's what made it so interesting is because it was passed down you didn't have to give it by a wolf right around puberty where everybody yeah. else, you know, becomes a, a, an allegory for, for puberty and, and turning it, into a quote unquote and man. It really was. And then they, they took the movie and then made it a little bit more kid friendly. Yeah. And where was the big in the eighties? Like a lot oh, of the stories. Yeah. You had the howling. Riller was, you know. wasn't that in the eighties as well with the werewolves in the, yep. the music. And there video. was a, that very brief running show just called werewolf. That was amazing. Werewolf in London was, I think, 80s as well. Early 80s. American Werewolf in London. Yeah. And your team, yeah. It's ever. But so like, so it would be that one. And then because there's not a lot to say, other than you definitely want to bring it more modern, um, <coughs> keep the personalities, but bring the graphics, bring the storyline more modern. Um, I'd make it a little bit more gritty, but not so grim dark. It's like George R. R. Martin vibes. And yeah. actually um, get Michael J. Fox to voice them. Yeah. If he's if he's still able to do it, yeah, I would definitely. That'd be kind of yeah, cool. His speech, his speech isn't as affected. It's it's his body that would. Or have him cool. have him like voice the grandpa, like that member. Oh, that'd right? be good too. So now we're talking about because the voice they used sounded nothing like Michael J. Fox in the eighties. I remember that. I was like, yeah, the voice gosh, acting back close. in the day. Standards for voice acting has gotten a little better. So that would be my second. 
And then uh, so I can turn it back over to you guys. I think my third would be more. It's, it's more of a theme than a specific show. But I like dinosaurs and dino riders because I like dinosaurs. I still vividly remember in 93 watching Jurassic Park as a kid in the theaters. In certain scenes, you're watching it between your fingers because you don't want to see it, but you want to see it. So you're peeking between your fingers. So what the hell are you covering your face for anyway? Like, I don't know. Dinosaurs the dinosaur could get you through the screen. It's an irrational fear that most of us had watching yeah, Jurassic like, Park because it looks so damn real. Dinosaurs, like in little boys, are just they go hand in hand, right? So I think bringing back yeah. a dinosaur, like one of those dinosaur themed shows, just does it for me. Like I love Michael Crichton too, so like I just I don't know. For me, it'd be the those two, it'd be the dinosaurs, the Thunder, the Barbarian, and it'd be Teen Wolf. All right, so I've given my three. Matt's given his two. Nick, what's your second and third one? Because you've kind of – you jumped on our thunder for your first two. So I'm going to give you a no, chance. No, 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 I think no, we I, stole I, I, two I, of his, and he already gave us his third. <laughs> I, I gave you my three. You guys were just <laughs> – based on the rotation of where we sit on the stream yard, I, I got last. I was like, these assholes stole all my answers. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what, what will be your last one then? Because you've given at least two. Um, I, and I know, are we talking about like ones that have, haven't be, been redone well, yet? The theory that Jasso, that Matt suggested to us, because I can't pronounce his last name, so I'm just going to give up and we're just going back to Matt. Uh, Matt suggested was reboots that haven't been done already. And then what would we do different? But insectoids. In insectoids. The insectoids. I don't remember that. They, it went on very long, but it was, you had... Yeah. The good guys rode like ants and mobs yes, and bees, yes. and the bad guys were like the arachnoids. Was it insectoids um, or insectars? Insectars. There you go. But I, I just remember the bad go bad guys using like spiders and all, all this, all your demon fuel type bugs, you know, scorpions and things like that. Which I think most of them were most because they called themselves the arachnoids, I think, or the arachnars. But I know I'm trying to like think of the. Was it a, maybe it was insectoids? I'm not even finding that on a Google, bud. No, it, it, I I remember it. I'm just trying to remember what it was called. Well, maybe it's because maybe I'm from another version of Earth after the super collider went off and emerged. Yeah, is it Berenstein or Berenstain bears? Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I see, I've got insectors, which came out in the 90s, but it's a French cartoon. No, the insectors were 80s. Hold on, let me see if this matches. Insectors. I mean, I know, I know what exactly what he's talking about. I know exactly what he's talking about, and I'm trying to remember what the heck it is. Was this our, is this our first uh, Mandela effect? Sectars. What are they called? Sectars. That's what it's Sectars. called. Sectars. Sectars. Okay. That's it. There he is, blonde dude, blue armor. Sectars. That's right. He wrote a um, a drone ant. So it's S E C T A U R S. All right, there we go. There we go. I was like, no, I, I'm there. there. I remember there. it. I remember it. That was only a mini series. Nah, that had five episodes. Why do I have a core childhood memory based on five episodes? Because you were sick Mama. that week and you watched every single one of them for a day for a week straight. And it had Peter Cullen in it. Yeah, you know, the voice of Optimus Prime. Of course, it did. He's awesome. It was also a comic. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was a that. comic. It was comic five by Marvel. Yeah. Sectors was surprise. Every by. single toy line had a cartoon and a comic. Yeah. And if they were really good, they got the Bubble Joe gum treatment on your baseball field where you get the little mm -hmm. crappy gum that would break your teeth, but it comes wrapped in a comic. Mm -hmm. Bazooka Joe never did that. Never no, broke Zuka your teeth. Joe never broke your teeth. <laughs> it was always there for you. <laughs> that's uh, we'll never break your teeth mom and dad um but yeah okay and we'll give you comics <laughs> but i i recognize the art so i i must have seen it at least in passing enough to know what it was but see that there, had, there, had, well, there had been more than five episodes though well the other thing too is you remember like back then they would do the commercials often more often than not were actually like clips of a cartoon so it could be yeah. you'd see those commercials all the time and it was, was just, just getting cartoon. inundated by media yeah, yeah. Taking so, yeah, my I mean, parents, I'm like, I need my sectars to fight my visionaries. Yeah, so that was the other one was that you also would see it that you know 
the um the graphic tees were big in the 80s because I remember having a lot of those and then the lunchbox thermos set that came with the uh the lunchbox it came with the the in little in a little Stanley type thermos in the middle and then maybe sometimes something for your sandwich like the sandwich holder you get the lunchbox combos the little tin the metal back in the or sometimes the plastic back in the day and then you had the school supplies that some of that stuff would be on like your trapper keeper Oh my gosh, trappers. The only thing I remember about trapper keepers is I would always get two. And one of them would I put in the locker and slam it into place so I'd have a shelf in my locker. <laughs> you had more room to put stuff in the locker. <laughs> nice. So my other fa- the other one I remember about the uh the trapper keepers was they did the was it Liz Frank or something that the girls would always get that looked like trippy and psychedelic, the colors. Maybe my sisters used to have those. I just remember it was like unicorns and, and weird. <laughs> and I, I'm looking at it as an adult and seeing some of those images. I'm like, yep, they were smoking something. Well, yeah. they, were, they just got to the point where they were just throwing things at the wall, trying to get stuff to be as successful as some of these. Like, I don't know if you guys have watched those documentaries, the toys that made us. Oh, I, I love that series. Them. And it's like some of those toy lines. You're just like, I cannot believe how crazy successful they were the the first like three or four waves of masters of the universe just like they were just printing money and the fact that they were just like barely getting things put out to make meet those demands is insane so yeah so all right so this is the part dear listener where we ask you what you would reboot so uh to join the discussion in the chat hey and, hey, uh, hey you've got a third you didn't <laughs> How did I forget the third? Matt, I apologize. It's Nick's fault. I don't know how, but it's what? still Nick's fault. What is happening right For now? what? What did I do? <laughs> All right. What will be your third? What will be your third? Oh, goodness. <laughs> My third would be Bionic 6. Bionic 6 is amazing and awesome. And I dare say has the best theme song of all time if, is, can we play a theme song if it's on youtube through the show or do you guys get a trouble uh, we show? get we get uh we, we get slammed okay so then after the show i'm gonna watch you guys listen to it because it's all awesome. right um the thing with this show is it's it's like it's one of those shows where i can't believe this has not been revisited in the fact that the concept itself is is um with as much as everybody over the last 10 years has gotten in the inclusivity and having different ethnicities. Is this um, it? No, that's mighty Orbot. Okay. Still Did a good you, show. Yeah. Very good. That, that's, that is the other contender for top, uh, top, uh, intro of all time. Do you need me to send you a picture, buddy? I got it. I got one. Okay. I just found he's it. Got it. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. He's got it. Yeah. So Bionic six, the thing that, that, is interesting about it is that it's a it's a bionic family, Woo-hoo-hoo. but it was the first time you really see a bionic family. Like you had the Brady Bunch, where it was just two white families combining, but they had their two own kids who were twins, and then they had a son that was black and a son that was Asian, obviously adopted. But um, it was just a real mom movie. had some explaining to do. <laughs> mom had some explaining to they, do. They covered that they were adopted. Trust me. Um, but the thing that it, it very tropish of like each character had their own specific set of powers, very younger age. Cause of, you know, it's, it's bionic one, mother one, sport one, yeah, you know, I remember girl that. one brain IQ, and then karate one, like the names were not exactly groundbreaking. We probably have to update the names, but it was just about these, this, this family and they, they almost get killed. They get resurrected with all these bionics and they become secret agents for this organization fighting crime. Cause why not? Who else is going to put kids to work? And the coolest thing is that these action figures, they were the same size as GI Joe, but they had die cast parts. Yep. Which is really cool, but also sucks because if you try and find them now, you can't find the individual figures for less than 50 bucks because they, they were very limited very expensive and now they're just such collectors items they're hard to even get and some of them you can't get for under a hundred 
And that's wow. not even new in the box. So that, that's a loose figure, as they that's say. A, yeah, that's a loose figure. I, that that's I am not familiar with that one, but it does sound interesting. It's all those jokes you see about kids yearn for the mine because you know they pull them out of the mine and now they mine in Minecraft. And like you see all the memes, kids yearn for the mine. So this goes right along with that trope where you throw the kids back to work fighting crime for Uncle Sam, because why not? Yeah. Well, future, yeah. future government, but yeah. What did what did uh what did what is the meme about Robocop got killed on the job that made him go back to work? Yeah. <laughs> the, next, the next day. Yeah. Go back to work, fool. But no, it was even death won't get you a day off. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a really cool concept. You know, you had the villains who are all bionic themselves with different abilities as well. Right. Very weird and comic booky as far as the villains are concerned. They all were weird and warped looking, and but also very cool. And I think this is one of those those concepts again of like you've got a family, like a literal family, not just a brought together. I mean they. They call themselves family. They all have the same last name, even though right. they do admit that, hey, we adopted these other two kids. But you've got cool action you can do between superpowers and martial arts and vehicles. You've got cool villains you could have. Definitely clear who's good, who's bad. And, you know, it's just superheroes before it was superheroes. And I just think, yeah, I don't, again... Aside from the fact that the toy line didn't didn't do well, I don't understand why you don't easily do this, especially with with CGI and computer technology now being able to make some of these cyber oh, like, yeah. transformation is so 80s because you know it's all hand drawn animation. But right. to see that enhanced now in CGI, it would be it would be fantastic. So yeah, that'd I, be really cool. I really feel like it could be something that would be a lot of fun. And then, like I said, you ain't got to change the theme song. You just replayed this theme song. Oh, it's absolutely. Amazing. Yeah, I, I like the idea where good is good and evil is evil. I, li- I, I, I get, as an adult, some of the room for the gray where, like, you know, maybe it's not so clear what's good and what's bad. But I, I do think there's room, especially when you're teaching young kids, like – the world i think there's room for clear cut like these are the good guys these are the bad guys and they're good because they do good things and they're bad because they do bad things and it has nothing to do with who they are where they were born who their parents are it's all determined by your actions yeah right and i think there's value in that and i i think some of the modern uh existential uh dread that you get with some of this claptrap we got coming out today like I, i i think you missed the mark when you're trying to teach you know, morality and essentially cartoons are social stories for kids, right? Like you're, you're yeah. teaching messages. They're yes. parables of our, of our modern age, right? Like, so I think there's room for that again, where we just teach good values because you do the right thing, even when no one's looking. I like that. Integrity. Integrity. So, all right, here's the honorable mention one that I didn't prep either one of you for. So I'm going to go first. So you have time to think about it. If you could take any movie from the eighties and reboot it as a cartoon series, what would you be? I'm picking the Goonies because there's room. I want to explore the pirate ship more. I want to explore the, Hey, you guys like, Oh, there's just too much there. That's like, they could explore deeper on a um, serialized basis instead of just a, 40 uh, hour and a half movie. So for me, if I'm cartoonizing a movie from the eighties and turning it into something, I'm going with the Goonies. Sir, Nick, you turn go. Uh, Beastmaster. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I would watch that. No, you know what? Honestly, and go ahead. Who wouldn't watch a cartoon where his best friends are a Panther and two ferrets. Yeah. You know? Eagle. And, and the eagle, eagle that gave him the sight, you know, with his little, little, his little wrist, little bracelet. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about that movie that just stuck with me as a kid, but I remember watching that because it wasn't overly sexual like most, like, um, eh, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't. You've watched it on a TV a lot. If you watch, if you go, I probably, I probably watched TV. it on TV a lot too. Like, there's a couple. Like, what's her name? Because she loved getting naked all the time anyway. She's fully naked in that movie because I completely forgot about it and got the I, I, Yeah, it. now it's like, oh gosh. Oh, I've done that. And you think, yeah. like, I've, I've done that with. The- I, I watch it on TV, yeah. And then I watched it as an adult, not TV, because it's like I have fond memories of that movie because it was fun. It was adventurous. Yeah. It was sword That's and sorcery great. type That's stuff. Great. 
you know, and next thing you know, I'm like, I don't remember titties being in this. <laughs> I, I had that problem when I was watching um, the, I bought the box set of Stargate SG-1 and I was watching that with my kid. And so you've got the first two hour episode. that's like a movie that then s- jump starts that 10 year series. And I'm watching, I watched this on TV. This was TV friendly. And suddenly they got the full frontal and I'm like covering his eyes. I'm like, no. And of course he wants to move the hands. Uh, Cause I did not. Well, remember yeah. that. that didn't make the TV version. Yeah. No movies for you. Yeah. Look, cover your eyes. Yeah. Um, it'd be Last Starfighter. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, and there's room for a sequel because you know they got the Armadas coming back, so you could even take that same character and have him be like the seasoned general now. Oh yeah. Ah, uh, I wanted to. I wanted that arcade. Uh, fans have made that arcade. Like they've actually they made the game. the game from the movie. And then they, you can buy a kit to build the actual arcade stand so you could have that arcade in your house. If I ever win the lottery, I'm not saying you'll know, but you'll know because that will be in my living the room. The ones that they made are a, a remod of Star Wars. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's pretty much the same game. It's the same game. Um, so they remodded it, just kind of gave them new skins and things like that. Um, but I've wanted to – I can't believe we're bringing this up now because I, I loved that movie as a kid. You know, you got this teenager who's in the middle of nowhere in a trailer park doing his best to make the best of his life and his future. And the hot and girlfriend. Got, and a super hot girlfriend who was also the uh, the main lead in uh, Night, Night of the Night Flyers. Comedy. And Night yeah. Flyers. And Night Flyers. I think. You know, so... The, the quintessential hottest woman of the 80s, in my opinion. Um, so, and yeah. He, and, then he, and then he gets to hang out with aliens and, and oh, Death and Blossom. The, in that, um, that Dunstar. organic humanoid oh. replicant thing that takes his place. And that scene where he's changing, that was like nightmare fuel and awesome all at once. Oh, and then his little brother wakes up. He's like, "Go to bed, or I'm telling your mom. I'm telling mom about your playboys." And he's like, "Oh!" And then he rolls over and goes back to sleep, <laughs> which would never work. Like, Qu- quintessential big brother threat. I'm like, "I'm gonna tell mom about your porn." <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one was when he's out in this, where the robot thing is out on the date with the, the super hot girlfriend, and he doesn't know what to do yet. So he's like listening in to someone like three whatever over yeah. and re- repeating what that guy said. And I guess that guy's like a well, real yeah, It got overly yeah. sexual too. And she's like, yeah. she's, Those she's other like girls have been nothing, to me. <laughs> that that been nothing to me. She's like, what are the girls? <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, I would, I, I'd watch that. I, I'd watch it as a reboot, as a movie. I would watch it as long as they honored the source material. I would watch oh, you it. Tom Holland. I think Tom Holland would be great. If they were going to reboot it, I think he would do great because he's just, he's that awkward. Yeah. You know? So that's put the him in that key. If that's you're going to do the reboot, since we talked about it, you have to like the source material. You have to honor the source material. Uh, oh, yeah. As much as I love the movie Starship Trooper, that guy did not like the the source material. And it showed. Oh, I don't think he, I don't think he read the book, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I, I found it first. So I think a staffer me, read it and just kind of fed him names. Yeah. I mean, I, I like it, but I didn't. I can separate it as a separate property because I like campy movies. But I mean, that's just one of those ones where, like, did 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 you read the same book? I mean, are we talking about the same show, or are you just using the same names? Yeah, you read the 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 CGI version of Starship Troopers is a lot closer to the source material. Yeah, Yeah. but I I like the idea that if we're going to do this, you got to honor none of the modern politics, left or right. We just want good old fashioned badassery and and you know, good is good and bad is bad and, and, and rock on. And look, I, I don't totally... know if you guys have seen that movie, Gran Turismo. I have. Yeah. Like, that was a great movie. Just make its planes. Like, it's, yeah. it's the same, that same thing. Like, yeah, because yeah, when I first saw it, I was like, that, and apparently that was a real thing that actually happened. Yeah, that's a true story, apparently. I didn't the guy, did I? Yeah, the guy who's, who it is about is the stunt driver for the actor in the movie. So the actual dude is playing, is this the the driver in the movie for that guy? Oh, man. Cool, but so, uh, yeah, so. playing video games will get you places in life if you know where to go. Yeah, take that, mom. Um, 
But uh, yeah, so that is what we would do. Um, if you guys need honorable mentions, but I know we're at an hour and a half and you have a hard deadline. So are you good? You got anything you want to throw in before we wrap this up? Talk about me? Yes, you, Matt. Oh, okay. Um, man, I think we've pretty much run the gauntlet of it. I mean. I- so next up is the 90s. Yeah, okay. Next up is the 90s. We need, All right. we need to find some, like a theme song for that. We, we probably should have had a theme song for this. Like, but, the you get, of the 80s. But and then, but just, then you got to worry about the auto, like, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, copyright violation that YouTube does. I mean, I got copyright struck for your commercial that you sponsored got, the episode, Nick. Okay, so I got, I Vans was doing a thing where you could put your own imagery, your own pictures on Vans, right? So I'm like, oh, cool, Phantom Hawk, slip on Vans. So I went through the website, I submitted the the imagery, and they hit me back. They're like, that violates copyright. I'm like, no, it doesn't. I own the copyright. You're good to go. Make the shoes. And they're like, no, we can't. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just I'll just continue drawing them on blank stuff. <laughs> well, much like with uh, anything, even cartoons uh, that you watch on sites will let you sometimes review them. So we will end the show by reminding you to please be kind and speak your mind on the reviewing platforms. Your reviews help the right readers, viewers, and comic book aficionados find the right products. So do your part, people. The comic book lovers especially like it when you share the stuff because I don't think they have as many sites where you can review stuff. So if you're a diehard fan, start a website, start a uh, YouTube channel, podcast, talk about the things, pimp what you love because that is how you get the word out and you keep your franchise, your fandom, your everything. You keep it funded. So word of mouth is everything. And with that being said, Matt, how can they find you? Is it just on Twitter? Just find me on Twitter at Mr. J Ninja, or you can find me on Facebook, just my full name. All right. So Facebook and the Twitters, you can find us, dear listener, dear viewer, on our link tree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E, link tree slash Blasters and Blades podcast. Again, link tree slash Blasters and Blades podcast. With the bit shoots, the rumbles, the YouTubes, the Twitters. We've got an email for professional purposes only, Blasters and Blade Podcast at gmail.com, also linked on our link tree. And finally, our Facebook group and Facebook page where all the shenanigans happen. Or more importantly, if you want to send that hate mail, Madam Stabby Stab over at Instagram, Twitter, or email on our link tree. She wants to hear from you. She will make you cry, and we're here for it. So, you know, you know what to do, people. And finally, you can find us on our website at anchor.fm slash blasters tech and tech blades. Again, anchor.fm slash blasters dash and dash blades, where for as little as 99 cents a month, you can help keep the lights on. These episodes are not free to produce, and we appreciate your patronage. Or you could support the show more directly at buymeacoffee.com slash author J.R. Hanley. Again, buymeacoffee.com slash author J.R. Hanley. Be sure to put in the comment section that it is for the podcast. And I promise I will keep my co-hosts duly caffeinated. They will drink until it pours out of their orifices. And we won't say which one because we're not that kind of show, Matt. Uh, And... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. And you could support the show by buying coffee brand coffee from our affiliate. Link is in the show notes. Podcast grunts is the code. You could get some of that lovely coffee brand coffee. I have been tearing up their uh, marshmallow coffee or hot chocolate. For whatever reason, I'm just going through a hot chocolate kick with the kiddo. Uh, mostly because I was let the teenager drink the coffee. So he's like, hey, let's drink some hot chocolate. So we're giving it a shot. It is surprisingly good. It's better than the standard like Nestle instant hot swiss miss milk. swiss miss <laughs> um for for a basically instant it's it's pretty good i don't know what's different about it but i don't i don't want to think too deeply about what calories might be in there and i'm just enjoying yeah just enjoy it man just yeah. let people sometimes enjoy things. gotta live a little right i mean yeah, diet right. calorie counting is good and all but sometimes you just gotta embrace the moment exactly. uh, it'll help you with that being said, thank you for spending some of your precious time with us. For my crazy co-host, I am J.R. Hanley, and this was the Blasters and Blades podcast. We'll be back next week at the same time. We will indulge our love of nerd culture, cheesy jokes, and all things that go boom. Matt, thank you for coming on. We are going to schedule that episode with Batman's gadgets and uh, 90s cartoons because you've got experience with your kids through the, the whole panoply of Cartoonville. <laughs> so you are the subject matter expert now, sir. Add that to your business card. Sounds perfect. I can do that. All right. And with that, we are out. Poof. Wait.